I think among the more, if I, if I were going to give my little sermon and points with pride to some exciting things, one of the more exciting notions, I think, is that school is a concept and not a place. The school is the community. The community is the school. Philadelphia, for example, some of these tapes that you'll want to be sure to listen to, or maybe even down in Houston, they're always ahead of Dallas, aren't they? You sure shouldn't I say that? No, again? that's not in Harrisburg <laughs> either. <laughs> they're going to be playing these tapes on radio and on there's some, some marvelous radio station that plays all the time. They'll be playing all of our tapes where you'll be able to listen to the students who don't go to a building. They take their journalism classes with the newspaper, their English classes with the newspaper. They do take their art classes at the Art Institute, their music classes with the symphony and so on. They do gather together in an office occasionally. But one of the more promising trends in response to your question is and I know there are none in Dallas, but to make sure we have no two by four by six teachers. This is the desk of Bob Bean, the administrative assistant to H.D. Pearson, the assistant superintendent for business in the Dallas Independent School District. And this is where it all comes together tomorrow evening when the polls close at 7 o'clock. Naturally, we're talking about the runoff election for place four on the Dallas Independent School District Board of Trustees. The two candidates are Joe Kirvin. He is the incumbent and being challenged by James Jennings, a veteran of the Dallas Police Force who represents the Committee for Good Schools. People in the city of Dallas, in the independent school district, will be voting from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. They will be seeking to put a man on the board in place four, an area that covers part of South Dallas, down through the area of Pleasant Grove, Riley, Cleburg, and into Seagoville. Election judges have been coming through the administration building throughout the day, like Mrs. Katie Yancey, picking up their bag of tricks, everything from paper ballots to ledger books in which they will keep records. 512 absentee ballots were cast, compared to 521 in the general election on April 3rd. This could indicate a large turnout, possibly a record. Only time will tell. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News, on the move. Why is this war any different than the others? This is, seems to be the first time that the church as such has really banded together in, in this, this fashion and said, let's stop this war, let's get out of a war. Why, why this one? Well, I think that the church has always been concerned about war, any war, because war is a destruction of human life, and the church has always been for the enhancement of human life. Uh, this war in particular, and... Um, the Cali trial, I think, has really raised this issue with the American people, and Lieutenant Cali said this himself, that if any good came out of this trauma that he was going through, it would be that America would examine itself and what was happening in this war.
Well, I believe that uh, state regulation of insurance is uh, in the best interest of the insuring public. Uh, the state insurance departments, the state insurance laws uh, are being improved and uh, regulation improved all along. We've been very much interested in seeing that good, effective state regulation is, uh, uh, is effective in every state. Now, in the administration bill for health care, uh, uh, it is proposed, and the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, Secretary Richardson, did say that uh, this would provide federal regulation of the health insurance uh, industry, and therein is another reason why we are concerned uh, about that aspect of it. Shortly after one o'clock, a um, white man drove to the window at our teller's, uh, drive-in teller's area and produced a gun and asked for all the money. And the teller uh, did just as she was told to do. Are there any descriptions of the man? No, none other than he was just a, uh, a white male about 25, 30 years old. Is there any description of weapon? No, the girl was so frightened uh, she couldn't give a good description of the weapon at this point. How long did the whole incident take? Oh, about five minutes. Were there any other witnesses to the incident? Uh, well, the other girl that was working in the windows were in the window with her, yes. Mm -hmm. Who were these two girls? Uh, we're not at liberty to give their names at this point. How much money was taken? Uh, we're not able to say at this point. Who's telling you not to say? Uh, not a soul other than my own... Uh, it's just my own uh, uh, rule that we've tried to live by. I think uh, this thing called participatory democracy is a very real phenomenon. It means that in mass urban technologically advanced society where individuals are so interdependent that they have to participate or the frustrations will be overwhelming. I think that's real. I think um, uh, community action is another manifestation of the needs of people to be involved. It's imperative that uh, you be able to affect the quality of your life, uh, to see that your garbage is collected and that uh, that the rats are exterminated that uh, run through the house where you live and that uh, the police are serving you and not suppressing you and that the fire department is protecting you. And, uh, if you don't have some power to affect the school where your children go, realizing that their opportunity for fulfillment comes through those schools, why your frustrations will be overwhelming. So community action is a, is a real need uh, and uh, it, uh, it, we're making progress. I see reform. I think we're coming into a period of renaissance. The question is whether we can reform fast enough because we're, we're confronted with a great many severe crises in this country and in this world today. Uh, I used to play against St. Louis soccer team and uh, Believe me, each time we play against the, that uh, St. Louis team, the game was really close. The game was every time so exciting, and uh, I enjoyed to play against that uh, St. Louis soccer team. Who are some of their uh, outstanding players? They have, uh, as far as I know, two, three players in defense. They are really good. And uh, two players they have in offense, we have to be careful and uh, prevent them to score. Would Some. you like to see another 4,000 fans here in the stadium tomorrow night? I hope there will be much more people because last Saturday we had the bad luck. It was raining all day long. So I expect much more people to come to see our next game against St. Louis.
The symposium tended to be general in its application to what it was pointing at, the education of women for social and political purposes, but through such things as lectures and discussions in the two days of the symposium, the approach was less of a shotgun theory than several well-placed bullets. Topics ranged from women and welfare through the civil rights activism and included the use of the news media to further the equalization of the sexes. Ironically, in the same discussion that one leader noted that women weren't using news media enough, a Channel 8 cameraman was asked not to shoot film. Also today, former Attorney General Ramsey Clark got together with a group of women in the radio TV studio for a two-hour discussion of women and their place in society and how it's changing. That roundtable was filmed exclusively for Channel 8 and will be the subject of a special report in the future. As for the conclusion of the symposium, what actually was learned, what actually was said, it was left up to the final speaker, Mayor Patience Ladding of Oklahoma City, to tell the partic participants where to take it from here. I talked with her about her thoughts on the future for women. I think perhaps uh, we have to work a little harder. In some instances, uh, women may have to be better qualified than men who would be considered for the same post. And it's uh, still a bit of an uphill battle. Looking at the crop of young women who are coming out of college now, uh, some pretty militant about equal rights. Do you think this militancy is a good thing? I think a, a, a considerable amount of militancy may react uh, against the cause, really, of uh, women's rights. Uh, men may well be frightened, I think, at uh, a great amount of militancy. It's doubtful that many of the women left the symposium with a burning desire to change the world. On the other hand, a lot of them did leave with a deeper understanding of what it could take to change it a little bit. And some are even talking about equal rights for men. Bill Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move at SMU. This office complex, handled by H.D. Pearson, the Assistant Superintendent of Business, and his administrative assistant, Bob Bean, is, is vacant right now. But in less than 24 hours, this is going to be a real beehive of activity. Because 24 hours from now, we'll have a pretty good idea who may be the next representative for place four on the Dallas Independent School District Board of Trustees. The office that is open, or the seat on the board that is open, is place four. It encompasses an area of Dallas County from South Dallas down through Pleasant Grove, Riley, Cleburg, and Seagoville. There are 216 precincts involved and 181 voting positions. 512 absentee ballots were cast in the runoff election compared to 521 in the general election on April 3rd. At that time, some 40,000 persons cast ballots. So does that mean we'll have 40,000 again? Well, the school board officials today declined to speculate on how many may turn out tomorrow. The polls open in just a very few hours at 7 o'clock in the morning. Exercise your right as a member of the Dallas Independent School District. Vote for either Joe Kirvin, the incumbent, or his challenger, James Jennings, but vote. From the Dallas Independent School District Administrative Building, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. I think it would have been uh, a terrific adventure, and I can only relate it to the feeling that I had in 1965 when I first made the U.S. traveling team that went against the Russians. In fact, it was the first team that lost, which I was very sorry about. But I was tremendously excited, you know, the prospects of going into Russia, being picked up in London by a Russian navigator, flying out in a Russian jet, tying a rope around my waist as we were taking <laughs> off. <laughs> no, I, I would have loved to, I still would like to go to Red China. I think it'd be a neat thing to do. I think uh, I'd like to go where other people can't, you know, that type of thing. That's what sports are about. That's what a world record is. That's unexplored territory, I guess. You might find Bill. You might find Bill Fleming ahead of you, or one of those guys somewhere. I'm not very good at ping pong, but I could do a pretty good job of running, jumping, and throwing. Well, do you think this really has done something? Uh, the, the ping pong episode of Red China. Well, I think, uh, of course, everything gets picked up so fantastically fast in our media, and uh, these poor ping pong players are now uh, probably going to be sought after by uh, Dick Cavett, uh, Johnny Carson, and everybody else. And of course. I did a decathlon with Carson once, and I guess it'll be a little easier for him to play ping pong on television. But uh, I don't know. I I think it's important. I think it's an important situation because it's a, it's a it's not an official type of hello or let's get together, but it is an indication that that may be following. And I don't think that we can continue to overlook a population of that size uh, officially at this point in time. 
Do you bear any bitterness to the AAU? Or was the article in Sports Illustrated correct to a degree that uh, you perhaps feel you should be made eligible for the 72 Olympics? Well, no, I, it's not the AAU completely. The AAU is really only responsible for following the rules that are set down internationally. A lot of people are mixed up on that, and I wish that would have been a little bit more uh, pointed out in the article. I, uh, I was re I'm really trying, or have been trying, to help to effect a, a new look at the rules, and I'm on a U.S. Olympic Committee to help look at that again, or investigate it. The AAU has really made a lot of strides forward. We have a new president in the AAU that's uh, is quite dynamic, Jack Kelly, which of course is Grace Kelly's brother. Uh, and also that the, the AAU has made great strides internationally to try and change the rules. For instance, uh, I mentioned to someone today that they have put forward an idea that a professional in one sport may be an amateur in another one. So maybe the people in Texas will be watching Bob Hayes run the 100 meters in Munich, although I don't know if he wants to or not. Have you 